Hello and welcome. My name is Erica from the British Society for Immunology and thank you for joining us on another COVID vaccine Q&A. Today I'm joined by Dr Louisa James from Queen Mary's University of London. Hello Louisa and thank you so much for joining me. Hi Erica, it's great to be here. Let's get started with the first question. Why is vaccination important as opposed to natural infection? So the simplest answer is that the vaccine does not carry the same risk as a natural infection. So we know that around 15% in total of people who develop, who develop symptoms following SARS-CoV infection experience the severe form of COVID-19 disease. Um, and while we know that as well as disproportionately affecting the elderly and it can affect those with underlying medical conditions, there's a significant proportion of otherwise healthy people who can experience either the severe form of COVID-19 or suffer from what's known as long COVID. Um, and it's still quite difficult to predict who might be affected by these two. In contrast, um, vaccination offers a really safe and effective way of inducing immunity to SARS-CoV-2 without the risk of severe disease or long COVID. So even in healthy young people, the risks that are associated with natural infection are, are far, far higher, making vaccines the safest option. I mean, also in terms of the immune response, there is now new emerging data from the PITCH study in the, in the UK showing that the immune response that's elicited by vaccination is equivalent or better than that following natural infection. So in, in, by better, I mean uh, more long lived and more robust. Question number three, are there any UK studies on the vaccines in patients with long COVID? So unfortunately, not yet. Um, these are uh, beginning to come out and this is really definitely something that needs to be addressed. Um, there are actually very few clinical studies on long COVID at all, um, and particularly among individuals who experienced initially relatively mild symptoms that did not need hospital care. And so as a consequence, it's actually still unclear precisely how many people experience long COVID. Now, in terms of a role for vaccines, um, we know that there's evidence now that, that vaccines are safe in individuals who have long COVID. So anyone who has this condition should certainly not delay receiving their vaccine when offered. Um, there are also um, a few anecdotal reports which suggest that a proportion of people who have long COVID have experienced some, some improvements in their symptoms after receiving the vaccine. Um, but it's really worth emphasizing that there's no real formal evidence to address this question yet. Um, and, and really, you know, as I said, given the burden of long COVID, this is really an area that, that needs more research. Question number four, do you need two doses even if you've had COVID before? Okay, so this is a really interesting question. Um, there, are, there are now at least two studies that have compared the immune response following vaccination between people who have previously had symptoms of SARS-CoV-2 infection compared to people who haven't had any uh, evidence of infection. And actually both those studies did find that a single COVID-19 vaccine resulted in a better immune response in those who'd had a previous infection. And by that, I mean that the responses were of a greater magnitude and they appeared much more rapidly. So within, within a week, as opposed to about two weeks um, in, in, in those who hadn't had a um, previous infection. Um, and actually these, these findings aren't surprising. And what they suggest is that the vaccine is boosting a pre-existing memory that's seeded by natural infection. But, but importantly, what we don't know for certain yet is whether or not a single dose in people with a history of COVID-19 is as effective as two doses. And so really, until these studies have been conducted, it's really important that you have your second dose when offered, even if you've had COVID-19. Um, we know that there's absolutely, you know, there's absolutely no harm associated with having two doses. And we know from, from the you know, extensive clinical trials that two doses provides much better long-term long protection than a single dose. Question number five, can I ask for a particular vaccine? Um, okay, so the UK is currently administering the Pfizer vaccine and the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, another one from Moderna has now been approved for all in the spring. Um, the vaccine programme is being delivered by the NHS, um, so you cannot choose which vaccine you will get, um, but, but be reassured that all of the currently approved vaccines have been shown to be highly safe and highly effective. Question number six, will we need a booster COVID vaccine this autumn? We don't know for certain yet. Um, it's becoming more likely that a booster may be offered later this year, um, but we're going to really need to wait and see how long the current vaccines provide protection for. Now, the first vaccines were given in clinical trials in May last year, um, so it's, it's 
perhaps too early to tell how long they'll protect against COVID-19. Um, in addition, the emergence of new variants of SARS-CoV-2 means that um, existing vaccines might be altered to offer better protection against any new variants, but um, this really is another wait and see a question. Question number seven, with mRNA vaccines, is all the immune reaction in the local cells in the arm? Okay, this is a fantastic question. Um, so when the vaccine is actually injected, it does trigger a response locally at the site of infection. And that's really important to start off that immune response. And so this involves different immune cells that reside at that site. Um, and also other immune cells can be recruited in from the blood. Um, but the, the response doesn't begin and end there because the spike protein that is encoded by the mRNA vaccine is actually transported into our lymph nodes. And here it's used to create immunity inside these structures called germinal centers, which is where the spike protein is used to train and expand our T and B cells so that they can recognize the spike protein. And then these go on to become long lived memory cells, which can then protect us from future infections. So a, it, very exciting, a recent study has found evidence now of robust, these, these robust germinal center responses in the lymph nodes of people who had been recently vaccinated. So potentially this is a really, really good sign um, for long-term protection by the vaccines. Question number eight, will we still catch the virus even after being vaccinated? So this is very important. Now we know that the approved COVID-19 vaccines are all highly effective at preventing severe disease and death caused by SARS-CoV-2. Now it can take up to two weeks for the immune response to develop and like all vaccines they're not 100% effective so it is still possible to um, catch the virus after being vaccinated but the overwhelming majority of individuals will be protected from disease. Now, in terms of transmission, there's still um, much less evidence on this, but early studies of some healthcare workers in Scotland has shown preliminary evidence of reduced transmission within households following vaccination. So it is looking promising, but we really do need to wait for more data. And in the meantime, it's therefore incredibly important to continue to follow government guidelines. So practice hand hygiene, social distancing and wear your masks. Question number nine. Can DNA from adenovirus vaccine be inserted into the human genome, considering big virus load? Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what the phrase big virus load means, um, but I will assume that you mean the amount of viral particles, the adenovirus particles in the vaccine. Um, but regardless, no, um, like the mRNA vaccine, the genetic material that it contains cannot be inserted into the human genome. So the AstraZeneca virus is an engineered vaccine that's based on uh, adenovirus. But it's been altered to display the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein on its surface so that an immune response is elicited that targets that spike protein and therefore can protect us from infection by SARS-CoV-2. Now the adenovirus that's been used to create this vaccine has been altered so that it cannot grow in human cells. So there's really no risk of um, a, a affecting your human, the human genome or your DNA whatsoever. So the very last question has come from Twitter. Are they effective? Uh, short answer, yes. Um, so the currently approved vaccines have now been tested in clinical trials of tens of thousands of people. Um, they've been shown to be very effective at preventing severe disease and hospitalization. Um, and also we now have real world data. So in countries where there's been widespread rollout of the vaccines, including both the UK and Israel, there have been substantial drops in the number of hospitalizations and deaths. And, and this can at least in part be attributed to the effectiveness of these vaccines. Those were some really brilliant answers. Thank you so much, Louisa. And thank you everyone for tuning in and submitting your questions. We will be back again soon. So please do keep following us and tune in again. Thank you so much, Louisa. Goodbye. Thanks very much, Erica, and thanks to everyone who submitted questions. Bye-bye.